Second thing we wanted to talk to you tonight, George, is intensely personal, as I say, and it's in connection with World Suicide Prevention Day. In this country, as you know, approximately 4,000 Canadians Canada. take their own lives every year, and that's an average of 10 per day. 90% of those involve mental illness. Now, our guest tonight, George Smitherman, has a personal connection to this issue. In 2013, he lost his first husband, his late husband, Christopher Peloso, to suicide. George, I know it still must be painful for you, but take us back to what happened to Christopher. Well, Christopher was suffering uh, from depression, and uh, we've all seen it. You know, that's the one number one lesson I just say to people is, if, you, if you've lost contact with someone, they've dropped off the face of the earth seemingly, and they don't respond like they used to, that we should all try to be a bit more proactive. Uh, Christopher had uh, had depression and uh, it messes with one's brain chemistry in a way that it uh, uh, sends uh, uh, horribly uh, uh, horribly wrong messages and uh, you know that uh, that uh, tormented Christopher for a long time and he took his own life on uh, on this on December the 30th of 2013 and um, I've done a few hard things in my life Carol but explaining to a three-year-old and a five-year-old that their dad I wasn't coming home again uh, stands, uh, uh, stands amongst those. So on a day like today, I just want to try and send a message to uh, people who are suffering through despair, as I have in response to trauma in a number of ways, uh, that uh, there, are hope, there, there, there is hope and to not give up hope. And as a public, public person who experienced what many would hope to be this kind of most private experience the one thing about it is that so many people reached out to me and then told me their story my brother my sister my aunt or my uncle uh, passed away death by a suicide so we just have to take care of each other what is the biggest emotion that you have had to cope with uh, I think it's uh, I think it's just the response to loneliness um, the withdrawal the social isolation that comes with uh, with especially for me with solo parenting. I, I was at the Cabbage Down Festival on the weekend and many people said, oh, it's great to see you. Where have you been? You disappeared. I said, well, that's four and a half years of solo parenting. It, uh, it was, uh, it was uh, trying and it was lonely, but at the same time, uh, my kids were, uh, were and always will be, I think, uh, the greatest source of uh, strength. And, uh, and when you got kids to work for, you got a reason to put your feet on the floor every morning. Yeah. What are you? What would you say to somebody, George, who's who who believe that they have a loved one, a family member, who they think might commit suicide? You know, there uh, there's a uh, there's a book that came out uh, that I think is being promoted uh, elsewhere. I think it's called uh, "A Bridge Over the River Y," and it's written by two parents who are dedicating a lot of love to survivor kids because they lost their child to a suicide and people should look in there for tips but the the the, the one thing that I would say really is sometimes maybe it's a Canadian thing I don't know sometimes we're a bit reserved in intervening and I think it's really really important that if if someone goes dark a communicator no longer communicates or disappears for a period of time that uh, uh, I, I really recommend that uh, you reach out and uh, prod just a little, see if there is some means to get support for people or especially to make sure to try and penetrate that brain chemistry and let them know that they're loved and that they're needed and that they're necessary and that they most assuredly would be missed. Yeah, do you, do you feel, I, I wonder if, if people often feel responsible after it happens, you know, maybe I could have done more, or should I've done this, or should I've seen the signs? I mean, there must be a lot of, a lot of soul searching that happens after somebody does commit suicide. Yeah, it uh, cuts you to the quick, and not just once, of course. And you ask yourself, look at the treatment uh, regimen that we sought to address the symptoms that we saw. I think Christopher would say that the mistake that we made is that we focused on symptoms, symptoms instead of the root issue, which was uh, depression. And uh, I think, uh, of course, uh, in my own sense also, because I had an, a history uh, on the political side of, uh, of, of you know, clinical matters as Minister of Health, also a tremendous amount of uh, questioning about the models that we have to support people. And I think 
there is a lot of new focus on mental health and, and addiction also, but we're still just scratching the surface in terms of addressing the ever-pressing needs that are out there for people who have suffered trauma of one form or another and have had no outlet to put it on the table and to discuss it and try and rationalize it or understand it or move past it. So we just got to give people as much of a chance to keep, get talking and keep talking. It sounds simple. But I think that's really the really a critical element. So reach out if someone's gone quiet. George Smitherman, former Ontario Deputy Premier and now a City Council candidate, thank you so much for joining me tonight. My pleasure. Thank you.